What's up guys, it's Cody with Bass and Bones again, and it's Friday, which means we are uploading a new vlog. Last week, uh, if you didn't catch it, I'll post a link, but last week we talked about kind of the reality of professional bass fishing and, and what you really need to bass fish and kind of a few of the different levels and, and the misperceptions of what professional fishing is. Uh, and kind of try to dispel a few of those myths. This week, I want to quickly talk about how to get started tournament fishing. I have people all the time ask me, hey, how did you get started? You know, how did you work your way up and, and all that? So, you know, for me, I started, there's all different ways, I guess, but for me, I started uh, actually in college. I was going to Arkansas Tech University, is a central, north central Arkansas, and had a fishing team. This was right when college fishing was getting started. So, I, I had been wanting to do that. Um, had a 16 foot bass tracker and that my grandpa had, had bought for us to go fishing in. And I'd fished around a lot, but hadn't really fished many tournaments. Um, so when I heard about this fishing team, and it, like I said, it was just getting started. I heard about it, uh, me and a, a friend of mine started going to the meetings and ended up fishing a few as a co angler. Actually, my very first tournament, it was, golly, it could have been, it must have been 27 degrees. Um, I remember it was sleeting during takeoff. And so that was my first uh, official experience uh, was sleeting and, and snowing on Lake Dardanelle. But I fished several of those events with the with the fishing club and, and eventually bought a boat. I got a job at Fred's Dollar Store there while I was in school and ended up buying a 20, 25 year old Ranger. My first boat was a, an old Ranger. And the, I mean, the carpet was tore up, the fenders were tore up, all the finish, but it did get me out there and get me fishing, which is if you refer back to the other video, that's what's important. Uh, it's just getting out there and actually getting to fish because time on the water will do more for you as an angler than anything else, any video you watch, any pro tip you watch. Uh, time on the water and learning how you like to fish and learning what you like to do will be huge for you. So uh, I, I did that, like I said, I got a boat and fish more of the college stuff, but I realized that I would love to do it as a, as a living and, and started looking and realized, you know, for, for my particular situation, there really wasn't a good opportunity to make any money at the college level, at least not at that time. I know things have probably changed a little bit, but at that time there really wasn't a lot of room to make um, money at, at that level. So I went and, and started poking around and I fished several you know, local tournaments, Monday nighters, Friday nighters, things like that, uh, and, and started looking at the BFLs, uh, the FLW BFLs. And so the, I think my second or third year uh, that I had a boat, I ended up signing up to fish those, the Arky Division here in Arkansas with uh, FLW. And, the first year, I absolutely got my butt handed to me. I mean, got my head bashed in. I didn't fish co-angler, I probably should have, but it was horrible. I got absolutely smoked my first year, but it was definitely a good learning process. And I had the opportunity to one, go to a championship, you know, and I mean, realistically had a chance to work up to go to the Forcewood Cup, which not that I'm even scared doing that, but I had a chance to, and he had a chance to make a little bit more money um, and, and that's what really, if you want to play this game, you have to be making money or getting money from somewhere. It's one of the only jobs in the world that you have to pay to play. Um, it's almost like gambling. Um, and so you, if you're not making money, you're not going to be out there. So I did that a few years uh, and then started looking when I was later on in my college career, I started looking at the, then they were the Rayovacs, I believe. And a buddy and a buddy and I, we talked about them and ended up signing up to fish co-angler. There was three or four events then. First one was on Bull Shoals. Fish that, ended up first one, finished 19th. I remember why I remember that, I don't know, but it, and it made a little bit of money and you, you know, that really lights a fire under you when you make, actually make money. You know, you start getting a good check. I think it was like, I might have made $1,200, which then 1,200 bucks was, you know, that was huge. That was all my entry fees, that was huge. Um, so really lit a fire under me, went on, had some more success later in that year. Next year, moved up. I started fishing uh, pro on the Rayovax, and was or the plan was I was going to fish on the pro side of the Rayovax, and ended up blowing a motor and big sad sob story there. Next year, came back and fished the tour as a co-angler and the Rayovax or Everstarts. There Everstarts then fished those as as a boater, and it was just you know things just kind of happened. I had a had a pretty good year. I was real fortunate um, to win one on Kentucky Lake, and that kind of pushed me and gave me the funds to move up to the front of the boat on the tour level because first year and i'll talk about this more when we do that you know how to get sponsors video but that helped me 
kind of it kind of springboarded me when I had that one good year to be able to fund the majority of my first year on tour and and like I said I'll talk about that more but that's a reality that a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of guys out there that are self-funding especially their first year um, and like I said I'm definitely gonna talk about that more and so I, I really condensed that story down you know this was a six seven year process um, working up through the ranks but you know I have people ask me all the time hey how do I get started well realistically you're not gonna you're not gonna hop straight into it um, obviously like I said time on the water but one of the best ways if you're not already fishing tournaments get on and just you know Google's awesome get on there and Google Arkansas bass tournaments Tennessee bass tournaments you know if you're in Alaska you probably you probably got to move you're not a lot of bass tournaments going on up there but um, just just wherever you're at get on there and search in most most states that I've seen they have some type of directory or something here in Arkansas it's I think get five bass um, and it just has a list and get in a club because you're gonna meet people um, you're, you know you're gonna get to fish with these clubs a lot of times they're gonna be like 20 to 50 boats and even if you don't have a boat, a lot of times you can find somebody and be a teammate. And that is huge. To get to fish with somebody else, it, it, it's huge. Because everybody, like I said, everybody is going to have a different fishing style. They're going to fish different stuff. And so you're going to pick up on little things. And so time on the water is huge. And when you can spend time on the water with someone else, you're just, you know, you cut that learning curve in half when you get to fish, especially if you can get in a club and make friends with somebody who really knows what they're doing, especially in that area, you go out and you're gonna pick up on stuff so quick. You know, fish those clubs. If once you get to the point in those smaller clubs, or even if it's a Monday, Friday night, or whatever, you're in those clubs and you get to where, you know, you're consistently finishing in that top one third of, of the pack, start looking at moving up you know maybe it's a bfl maybe it's some other you know type of weekend series depending on which area you're in start fishing those maybe you want to do them as a co maybe you want to jump straight to the front but just slowly move up yeah the entry fees are going to increase um, but the the reward it's all a risk kind of risk versus reward um, with that the entry fees are going to increase but you're probably gonna have a chance at winning several thousand dollars when you win that money you know you can roll it back into a, a fishing fund uh, is what i do and use that to hopefully start paying entry fees towards the next level that regional level you know uh, the what well, FLW the Costa series now it used to be a Rayovac and Everstart and you can use that money to roll back in and kind of invest in yourself because what you're doing you're, you're doing if you're if you're wanting to really fish professionally or get to that next level you have to realize that you're kind of building a company you're building a brand and if you win a little bit of money and go and just blow it you're never going to get to that next point um, you, you really have to look at it as a business because that's what it is. And so you, you start taking that money and figure out a way to use it, to reinvest it in yourself, to start working that ladder up to the top. It's, it's not fun. It's not easy, but nothing else is, you know, it, it's, it, when you look at it from a career, you don't come out of college and go straight in and start, go straight to the top of a career, whether it's engineering or whatever, you're not going to come out of school, trade school, college, whatever, and go straight to the top. It's just not going to happen. So when you start working up those uh, different organizations and different size tournaments, just be sure to reinvest in yourself and always kind of cliche, but keep your eye on the prize, you know, look at where you're wanting to go. If you're to a point, you know, and there's, you have no opportunity to fish larger tournaments, you have no opportunity for any publicity, you have no opportunity um, to grow with that organization, maybe it's time, maybe you've kind of outgrown it, maybe it's time to, to look to that higher level. Um, and you'll make it, uh, you can, you know, hard, it's a lot of hard work. It might take longer than others, but as long as you're always trying to learn something on the water, you're always trying to take something, whether, even if it, you don't catch a single fish, you try to learn something. And like I said, if you can fish with other people, um, it, it, it can happen. It can happen for anybody. That's one cool thing. One of the things I love about bass fishing is anybody can do it. You know, there's guys out on the water that have a ton more natural talent than me, but I like to think that to make up for that, I can try to outwork them. And that goes for a lot of things. Like I said, not just fishing, maybe you're a motocross rider, BMX rider, or maybe you're an engineer, maybe you're military, whatever you're doing, you may not have more natural talent than somebody, but you can probably outwork them, definitely, definitely. So if you're looking to get started in this, don't worry so much at first that, like I've said in the last video, hey, I gotta have all the new you know, boat, all the new gear, all this, you, you don't, you don't need it you know and don't immediately start working on oh i've been fishing for six months and i gotta have a sponsor i gotta have sponsors i gotta have jersey 
don't you know get your so get yourself established before you start working up those ranks once you realize that that's where you want to go or maybe maybe you don't want to fish full time maybe you want to get to that regional level figure out where you want to be because if you don't know where you want to go you you're not ever going to ha have a way to establish a plan to get there so that is priority number one is to figure out where you want to go maybe that's it maybe that's the bfls which nothing wrong with that if you want to be a bfl angler figure out that's where you want to go but but once you figure that out, you're gonna have a lot better idea of how to get there because you're gonna know how much money you need a year for entry fees. You're gonna know how much you know travel and all that. So definitely figure out where you want to go with fishing with your with your fishing career. Like I said, whether it's BFLs, whether it's a regionals, uh, whether it's the tour, or maybe it's something different. Once you figure that out, and I'll, I will leave y'all with this because next week, next Friday, we're gonna talk about dwell in. I know everybody wants to hear how do I get sponsors. But one of the biggest things I'm gonna leave you with this is recognize that from day one of your fishing career, you are building your brand. Even if you, your very first tournament, and I wish somebody would have told me this, your very first tournament, you're building your brand. For you, that's you know obviously a reputation, it's your results, it's how you act, you know both when you catch them and when you don't catch them. You're probably judged, more highly on when you don't catch them than when you do. So recognize from day one, when you start that, that journey going toward being a professional fisherman or wherever you're headed, that you're being watched and you're being judged and you're establishing your brand just as, you know, if you start a small business from day one, uh, impressions are important and perception is reality. So always, um, be aware that you're building that. You, I can't, I can't stress that enough. That you are your brand and you are your business in all aspects. So, anyways, thank y'all for watching. Next week, like I said, we'll be digging into how to actually get sponsors, how to start, you know, building resumes, and how to start approaching different sponsors out there and, and different partners. Um, I hope this helped. I appreciate y'all watching. It's Bass and Bones. Check back next Friday at three o'clock. Thanks, guys.